So here's the rack in the oven. I've only got uh, slots for one shelf welded in so far, but you can see it fits really nicely. I'm going to have another sub rack that this rack will, will roll out onto um, so that it can just uh, have castering wheels underneath and then it, it'll mate up. So I'm working on the sub rack here, the part that's going to roll the uh, rack to the oven. And uh, I've finally gotten smart enough to use the drill press to drill the holes for the castering wheels on these guys uh, to make that a lot easier so I'm not having to try to drill perpendicular holes with a hand drill uh, in the middle of an awkward thing that I've already welded together. So, um, so I think that's going to work a lot better and go a lot faster. As I was uh, putting my rack in here, I noticed that it was catching, it was too high, it was catching on the, the edge of the uh, oven gasket up there. And so I decided that I should go ahead and move that up a little bit. And I noticed also that I was getting some daylight through the sides on this. Um, so I moved this one out also. So the, the fat part of this used to be set in like that and I just move these rivets out a little ways so that uh, so that the fat part is in between the door and the, the stud there um, and it seems to be doing a tighter seal so we'll see if if that keeps it a little tighter and maybe even uh, helps it heat up inside a little quicker so this bag of rivets was uh, what a thousand rivets in here when I started the project and we're down to just the last uh, scraps there at the bottom so here's this uh, sled as I've decided to call it set up where uh, where it's supposed to be here I'll show you how this cart's gonna roll out onto these rails can just put a c-clamp or I don't know I might devise something clever to, to hold this in place here like that but uh, but I'll just clamp this to the sled and then the whole thing once it's in place there can roll around and not be limited by those rail wheels but that this system is going to keep the, the rack able to uh, stay straight in the oven since it's such a tight fit I just wanted it to roll right in like that. So I think that's gonna work out real well. So I've got the sled strung up here and uh, just getting ready to coat that. I'm at the point where I've hit it with the wire wheel, I've gotten all the junk off of it and I degreased it with some degreaser, simple green stuff, and a, a paper towel and some Scotch-Brite. So I'm just gonna uh, go over it with the torch here real quick and just kind of warm it up and, and make sure I burn off any little bits of paper towel or something that might have gotten stuck on there and then I'll be ready to coat it.
Okay, so we're looking through the uh, window here, obviously, at the sled. And the bottom of it is starting to flow out there. You can see it getting shiny down there. And uh, as we move up, it doles out. You can tell that it's it's not not flowing out up there yet. And that's at the uh, thermocouples reading 100 degrees, 99.9. There it is, 100 now, after about uh, 20 minutes here. I'm using the Eastwood red uh, powder for this, and the instructions say to cure it at 375 for 20 minutes after flow out. So right now, the uh, uh, it's about 15 degrees centigrade below that, so whatever that is. Uh, uh, at the thermocouple. So I'm just going to open it up here and take a temperature reading off of the part itself and see uh, see how it's doing. The top's at 336. The bottom's at 402. So there's definitely uh, a disparity there, um, despite the fan trying to even things out. But uh, so maybe uh, maybe I should set the temperature a little lower and try to find a happy medium in there somewhere. But uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to play with that and let experience sort of figure that out. That's why I'm doing this test run on a piece that I don't really care how it turns out. It's just the, the rack sled, so um, stay tuned.